I'm Krista with Magnolia Ridge Photography. Many of you know me. If you don't know me, then that means maybe someone has shared this video or you have stumbled across it on YouTube, which is great. Yay! Give us a like, subscribe. It's mostly wedding videos and wedding industry related stuff, but hey, we like meeting new people. Anyway, um, today I want to talk about the big thing that's on everybody's mind. COVID-19, aka the coronavirus from Wuhan, China. There's so many names for this thing. I, I'm, we're just going to call it COVID-19, which is the official name for it. Um, there's a lot of misinformation going around right now. Memes, opinion pieces, running rampant about COVID-19. You have to decide what is true for yourself and your situation. We do not advocate panic buying and racism, nor do we believe you should ignore... Um, <laughs> ignore your messages, ignore um, global events surrounding this virus, but uh, please use your best judgment to determine courses of action or inaction for your situations and for those around you, family members, etc. Um, wow, that thing's going crazy. Um, the purpose of this video is strictly related to the wedding industry, uh, primarily in the triad of North Carolina and how COVID-19 may be affecting us and impacting our clients and our vendors. The weddings, of course, are our business. That's how we pay our mortgage and support our family. Um, so anything that is concerning in regards to my business and my clients and even our fellow vendors and this industry is important to me. So I wanted to take a moment and address it a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, information and control measures, etc. All of that changes day to day right now. Um, if you've been following this for any length of time, it, it was very slow to start, especially in the USA. And now all of a sudden, literally like hour by hour and day by day, things are exploding as far as information and changes and press conferences and all that stuff. So, um, you know, what's true today and right this second is actually may not be true for tomorrow and there's even information that I'm going to give you that has changed since yesterday when we recorded it. So just, you know, keep up um, to date with reliable sources. We're going to start with what is COVID-19. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of it. Um, but a lot of people aren't paying attention yet. There are still people who are going about their daily lives, who have been currently traveling, who have not really paid attention to what's going on. Uh, COVID-19 is a respiratory illness uh, that spreads from person to person. It's a novel, aka new strain belonging to the family of coronaviruses. You know, the ones that are on the back of your Lysol can or whatever. That's a coronavirus family, but that does not actually address this new coronavirus, which is COVID-19. Um, it just addresses the family that's included in the common cold, the SARS and the MERS, and this is a new strain of it that is believed to originate in Wuhan, China, um, where the first outbreak occurred. The CDC says, quote, and I'm going to read it, um, probably emerged from an animal source, end quote. In the early days of the virus, um, there was a lot of conjecture about where it came from, from a wet market in Wuhan, from bat soup, from snakes sold there, um, because it is a zoonotic type virus. But there was also conjecture about a level four bio lab that was in a few miles of the wet market. I don't know. If you would like to um, go out and look at it because it interests you, there's plenty of articles, there's YouTube videos, there's conspiracy sites. I mean, there's opinions and information, and I mean, 5G, all this stuff is just, there's tons of information. I know, I talk with my hands, it's driving me crazy. Um, there's tons of information out there. So, you can go research that. I'm not going to give you my opinion on it. I am not a virologist. I am not educated in any way, shape, or form in that field. I have been following it since early January, um, before Wuhan ever went under quarantine, but that's something that you need to find out for yourself and has no bearing on the current situation. So we're not going to talk about it. Um, if it exists, 
the origin is an issue for the purposes of this video or the wedding industry right now. The wedding industry directly has been hit hard uh, in certain areas. Um, within the wedding industry, there are many different factions of the wedding industry. There's photographers, there's caterers, there's travel agents, there's, you know, there's a bunch of different businesses that make up the wedding industry. Uh, some countries have canceled all weddings and gatherings uh, during quarantine situations. Locally, the big thing is our, like, our wedding dress vendors and travel vendors um, are seeing an impact already. So at this time, venues have not been impacted um, as much because they mostly book like a year out. So people are, are still very optimistic about the future. I think everybody's kind of waiting to, to warm weather to see if that, you know, affects and downplays this virus. So everybody's still optimistic about booking their weddings, you know, in the fall and spring of next year. None of that has been affected right now. Um, and I have not personally become aware of anyone locally canceling their weddings. Everything is going forward. Uh, all of our events are full steam ahead. I've spoken with some of our clients everything's good so I don't know that it's affecting our industry today right now as far as any upcoming weddings uh, I did receive a message from a Castle McCulloch shortly before filming this that out of an abundance of caution they are providing hand sanitation stations throughout the property for the upcoming bridal show on Sunday um, and they have asked all of us vendors to bring hand sanitizer for our booths as well which I have mine right here and I just actually recently did a bridal show this past weekend and a few of us that will be at Castle McCulloch actually had brought some to our booths already so we were already on top of that um this is what I have so I can't find any more so you are not taking this from my booth I will be growling at you if you attempt to kidding but not kidding okay so they're also giving us a choice on participating in their punch card program, which we usually like to punch the cards because it lets us talk to every bride and, you know, really get to know people. But um, brides have the choice of not having it punched by every station and we have the choice of not punching it. That way we're not spreading germs and touching everything and stuff like that. So that's a little bit different and that's fun. I think it's a very, very good decision and I think it's a great effort on their part to make everyone feel secure and we're actually looking forward to seeing people there. So, <clears throat> good job, Castle McCulloch, and I think other venues and other um, programs and stuff like that will be taking those precautions as well. So, let's talk about the wedding dresses. Steve Lang, who is the president of the American Bridal and Prom Industry Association, and I am reading some of this, <laughs> just because I want to make sure I get everything right. He was quoted as easily 80% of the world's supply comes out of China. Um, so even factories located elsewhere, like India and Vietnam, use fabrics and components from China. So that equates to 80% of the wedding dresses totally, you know, coming out of China. So what we did is I went and spoke with Katie Stanley, who is the owner of Songbirds Consignments and Bridal in Greensboro off of Lawndale, because she does not custom order dresses. She actually um, purchases dresses and you can buy them from the rack and have them altered. And so I wanted to see how this affected her because I figured it would actually increase her business. So let's hear what she has to do. Okay, and we are here with Katie Stanley who owns Songbirds Bridal and Consignment in Greensboro off of Lawndale Drive. As one of the most popular bridal boutiques, that does not rely on ordering. Have you seen any issues with your stock or availability for stock recently? I know we've actually been pretty good with our stock. We actually get all of our stuff locally. We have stores across the entire United States, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, and Texas that all send us their end of season merchandise. So the way that our store works is we get previous season's items. So anything that was fall of 2019, 2019 excuse me, is what we get. So everything was already in stock and just sent to us. Nice. Um, have you seen an influx of traffic for this time of year compared to previous years? Yes, we've seen a lot. Um, a lot of brides who are a little hesitant to order online or to order from stores. So, and we're also getting a lot of brides whose weddings are coming up in the next two to three months who had a dress elsewhere who are now a little worried. So they're coming here for a backup dress or the first dress because the first dress didn't arrive on time. 
what about prom because I've seen reports that the prom um, stock what stores have and what the warehouses have right now is basically all they're going to get for this season have you seen an uptick for prom as well yeah it's a little tricky with prom because they're going online to these sites to order but most of the sites are not announcing any issues or any shipping delays so the girls are ordering it just fine just like normal only thing is the dress is not going to arrive on time because the manufacturers are already shut down and the plants are already shut down but there's no notices on any of the websites mm -hmm. so the girls are coming to us like the week of their event finding out that their dress was never shipped <laughs> So we may actually see more of an effect too for fall and spring of next year because we don't know when things are going right. to smooth out. Everything's so uncertain right now that everybody's kind of just taking it one month at a time. Um, we're just trying to go along and figure things out. Any warehouses that already had merchandise in stock are okay because they can send out the merchandise that was already made. But anything that hasn't been made yet or manufactured yet and the manufacturing plants are closed is where you're going to run into the issue. So that'll be a big problem for fall and spring of next year. Awesome. So do you have any advice for the newly engaged brides out there or brides who are worried about getting their dresses in time for their weddings? Sure. I mean, there's not much to worry about. Well, yes, it does kind of limit you a bit not being able to order dresses just because of the uncertainty. You know, as of now, places can still order dresses. We just don't know what's going to happen over the next few months. But there are, you know, plenty of stores like us. You can come right in, buy off the rack. We carry 400 bridal gowns in stock. We replace our stock weekly. So we have plenty to choose from. You don't have to order anything. And there are a lot of stores around each state that are like that. So I would suggest just shopping local, supporting local, and, you know, not worrying about ordering anything online. You've got plenty to choose from in places like our store. Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie, for taking a few minutes to talk to us. And for any brides or prom shoppers out there, come to Songbirds Consignment off of Lawndale Drive in Greensboro and see what Katie has for you. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank you. It. So please go visit Katie Stanley at Songbirds Consignment and see if she can help you out. And um, we appreciate her speaking with us. Uh, so let's talk about travel and tourism. Travel and tourism stocks are being hit really hard right now due to travel restrictions and the coronavirus outbreaks. And people being scared to travel because they don't know if they can come back or if they'll have to be, you know, if there's an outbreak and they'll have to be quarantined and miss work and this, that, and the other. So travel's being hit really hard right now. We spoke with Shane Lawrence at Imagine Travel in downtown Greensboro. He took time out of his day to speak with us um, on March 11th, which uh, at the time I'm filming this was yesterday. And that afternoon, actually, when I came home, there were already some changes to what he and I had spoke about. So let's see what he has to say, and then we'll address some of those changes. Okay, here we go. We are here today with Shane. Introduce yourself, Shane, and your company. Hey, I'm Shane at Imagine Travel. All right, um, I'm just going to ask you a couple quick questions, Shane. Um, with travel and tourism, stocks are being hit hard right now due to travel restrictions and the coronavirus outbreak. Um, so the CDC is actively suggesting that high-risk people do not take cruises, for one. With the average age of cruises being 46 uh, years old, with a median household income of 90000 and 60% full-time employees, are you seeing a decline in bookings for cruises? I'm seeing a huge decline in bookings for cruises right now. Um, just because, you know, the way the CDC has painted this thing. Um, but now we also have people that are looking for those last-minute deals and they're jumping on board, you know, right away. Um, but for those people that, you know, the media's kind of got to them and they're, they're not so much concerned with getting the coronavirus, they're more concerned with um, getting out there and then getting quarantined and not get, getting back in. Are you, so, see, are you seeing a difference in like the age group that's booking these last minute deals? Uh, yeah, always younger. Okay. Yeah, always younger and when families you, or singles or uh, most mostly couples. Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't want to take their children, you know, to deal with this. But then also we have a lot of families that are canceling right now, and then they're rebooking Vegas or they're going somewhere, you know, like instead of going on a cruise ship to Jamaica, they're actually flying and staying in Jamaica. Okay. So. Are they getting the upgrade packages with the balconies and stuff just in case now? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and the cruise lines are actually uh, incentivizing people to stay on board, so they're giving them onboard credits or whatever to uh, to keep them on board. So. That way they don't go off and get something and bring it back on the ship. Right. Okay. Yeah. And over half a million people sailed this week, 
and there were only, um, I think it was 20 or 30 cases of coronavirus on just two ships. But there's ships always cruising around the world all the time. Okay, that's so. good information to know. Um, specifically, how has honeymoon bookings and uh, destination weddings been affected? Okay, so we do a lot of honeymoons here, obviously, and a lot of destination weddings both. For destination weddings, like I say, it, most of them are always in the Caribbean, so it's not really affected that whatsoever. Um, but, uh, of course, this has only been going on for like three weeks, too. Uh, but as far as for honeymoons, everybody's still going to take their honeymoon. Now, if their honeymoon was to Italy, I mean, obviously, they're doing something different. Um, I had a couple that was doing a river cruise, and those go from Amsterdam to Basel, Switzerland, or they'll go from uh, Budapest to Passau, Germany. But a lot of people like to fly into Italy early and do the river cruise or, or out later and do Italy. Uh, so what they're doing is now they're just cutting the Italy part off and still doing the river cruise, even though that industry has been terribly impacted uh, because most of river cruise couples are going to be older always. Um, but we're trying to change that by sending more honeymoon couples on river cruises because, you know, it doesn't just have to be the, the older people that get to enjoy things like that, you know, so. Awesome. Do you anticipate a further decline or a resurgence when spring arrives? Um, you know, there's no way to predict the future on that. I mean, honestly, I think that more and more people are starting to realize, um, like when they go to Walmart and it's out of toilet paper. I mean, people realize how overblown this is just a little bit. However, you know, if you do look at the statistics of it, you know, if, um, if the flu kills about 0.08% of the people that get it, coronavirus is about 2%. I do think that coronavirus is two times as lethal as the flu. Um, but as far as catching it is concerned, I mean, if you look, there's what, 300 cases in the United States, but, uh, we're over a thousand now. Yeah, over a thousand. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, as far as when you look at the death rate too, it's mm -hmm. so much lower right now. And it, yes. And it does change every day though. So it was like 300 something like two days ago. Was that right. That yeah. <laughs> That's it's a like, big jump. Yeah. It's going to jump a lot. I do think it's going to spread though. Big time. Okay, yeah. so um, have you seen, you haven't seen a decline so far, just some changes in business? Um, we all know there's been declines in cruises, but then there's been... An, but they're re, they're doing like destination now, so yeah. it's not necessarily a decline per se, just a switch in the industry. There, there's been more of an uptick of people doing, uh, especially domestically, uh, because like Las Vegas right now, the deals we get are insane. Like an entire week in Vegas with a hotel at the MGM, for example is like 500 bucks a person. Wow. I mean, it's, I mean, it's giveaways. What are some East Coast deals you've got going right now? Well, we don't do a lot in the East Coast, really. I mean, uh, you know, we don't do anything local like Myrtle Beach or, you know, Savannah. Florida, we, Disney. We do that. We do Disney, Universal, uh, New York, um, re on rare occasions like Washington, D.C. New York's a hot spot. Do you have any deals coming out of New York right now? Uh, unbelievable. Okay. Unbelievable. Probably about, about the same like 500 person. So now Disney World is a location where you're going to have a lot of people in one combined space. And that is what people are worried about the most right now. So if you take a look at, you know, uh, uh, the capacity of the Magic Kingdom is 75,000 people per day. So let's say you have a lot of people that were going to go on a cruise or they're going to go to Europe. And now all of a sudden they're going to Disney World. Well, they need to think about that. The cruise would have been just safe a bet. Right. Um, but I have not been booking a lot of Disney lately, so I actually think that they will go on a decline as well. Okay. Any advice to engage couples out there? I mean, don't worry about the future. I mean, you know, especially if you're a younger couple, I mean, you still want to live your life. And it's like we, we actually made a video uh, for the office. It's wash your hands, you know. Uh, we turned that song, Whip It. <laughs> Into shape, you know, <laughs> go for it, you know, so we changed it to a Do you it. have that posted yet? Yeah, but do I think the coronavirus will be massive and, and um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Right. Um, Maybe but now a the possible cruise, research in fall. Right, but now the cruise industry, to put it in perspective, this is nuts. Uh, so Royal Caribbean stock two weeks ago was 120 a share. So today it's $48. Time to invest. So, yes, and but they've lost 70% of their company value. Yeah. And you're talking, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. And that's Everybody say goodbye. Shane with Imagine Travel in Greensboro. 
come see him. He can help you out and make the best decisions uh, for what to do right now and in the coming months. Yeah, and we have a lot of other agents that work with us too. So not just me. Anybody here can help. And we're awesome. happy to help. Thank you so much for talking to us, Shane. Thank you. So go visit Shane. And if you have any concerns about where to go for your honeymoon or what you should do right now, um, that type thing, he will get answers for you. He will help you make decisions and set you up with the deals and, you know, everything to try to um, limit exposure and this, that, and the other. Afternoon, when I came home yesterday, President Trump did a very short, brief Oval Office um, press conference and announced that a 30-day travel ban was going into effect starting tomorrow, Friday, um, to Europe, countries in the European Union, in addition to Italy and China. Um, so that was that's big, and that changes a lot of what you know Shane was talking to us about other options instead of you know stopping at Italy, you know taking the river cruises and stuff like that. So that is going to change some things now. So to follow the latest information, go to the description below and there will be a link that takes you to Shane's page. And I know he uh, mentioned earlier that he was doing a video um, to give an updated statement on the current situation uh, since yesterday. So go to that link and you can go see Shane and, you know, keep up to date with the information from Okay, um, so let's talk about insurance. One of the articles referenced that um, a planner was not recommending buying wedding insurance because it doesn't recommend against a global pandemic. But that's not really uh, good advice, first of all. So I called Stormy Speaks, who works for Nationwide, and she is an agent that has come out to a lot of our bridal shows. And she was so sweet to talk with me over the phone. And she was discussing that there are different event policies to cover different issues. So, like your liability policy protects against guest damage or liquor incidents, that type thing. And then the event cancellation policy would protect against severe weather, tornadoes, sudden illness for immediate family and vendor bankruptcy, no-shows, that type thing. And then there's other riders that you can get to protect against other things. So the best thing to do is to communicate to your agent what your specific concerns are for your event and ask about coverage to address those concerns. So call Stormy if you do not have an agent. And I will post her information below as well as you see it right up here on my computer screen right now. And you probably also hear my dogs barking in the background. Um, but call your agent or call Stormy and talk to them about your concerns if this is a concern for your event and what coverage you would like to have for your specific event and wedding so that you are not guessing or in the blind about this. I personally believe that uh, weddings may have smaller guest lists uh, than previously expected and, you know, high-risk individuals need to strongly consider whether they should fly or whether they should visit certain areas um, for attendance purposes uh, at family events and gatherings and stuff like that. And these are recommendations by the CDC as well. So anyone who has compromised immune system or is high-risk should... Um, and are required to fly should consider what their options are and you know what they need to do for themselves but also for where you're going um, you know you may be visiting an area for your cousin's wedding or something like that and there may be a bridesmaid that is auto autoimmune <coughs> deficient or something like that so if you're flying in from Seattle Washington into North Carolina and you don't know who all's coming to the wedding that may be local and are not in an affected area. You don't want to risk bringing it to them. So just take that into consideration um, because the last thing that you want to do is give a bride and groom or any of their loved ones or family COVID-19 
and then you know it kind of breaks out from their wedding and their wedding was the source and that is what they have to remember for their big day <laughs> and we don't want to do that so you know if you're a high risk or from a high risk area just you know think about that um <clears throat> Be sure, if you are not traveling, be sure to let the couple know. That way they are not paying for um, a meal for you and chairs for you and stuff like that. And couples, be sure to let family members know that it's okay not to come if they are uncomfortable with it. Just let you know so that you can save some of that money. I mean, that, that's really what it's going to boil down to in this situation. <clears throat> Photos and video, that's what we do. So to sh to have those is going to become more important than ever right now because that's how you're going to be able to share with people your big event if they cannot attend. So you may have a, a slightly smaller wedding um, if people cannot travel out of certain areas. I know um, there's a place in New York right now that has an actual quarantine area going on. People may not be able to travel out of there. You may have family members in Italy or um, Europe or somewhere else that they cannot travel here right now. So just be aware of that and that these photos and videos that you're going to be sharing online, they're more important than ever. So you definitely want to invest in quality photography and video services right now because that's, that's going to be a big thing for this short, short period of time. Another thing that you can consider doing at your wedding is adding hand sanitizers and soaps. You don't always know what the venues provide and you know we hope that venues are stepping up their game on that and making sure that there is extra hand sanitizer and extra soaps in the bathrooms, things like that, and doing deep cleans between events. But out of precaution, you might want to bring some Clorox wipes and some hand sanitizer and maybe even some antibacterial soap for your guests to make sure there's plenty of it and it is provided for your event. Um, it might be a little hard to find some of that stuff right now <laughs> depending on what area you are in, uh, but that is a good suggestion um, to put everyone's minds at ease. Uh, all the vendors are here for you and with you during this unique time in history, uh, so let's work together to keep everyone healthy and happy ever after. Um, it's it is what it is, so let's just work together. I don't think there is any reason to panic. There's never a reason to panic. Even in the worst situations, panic doesn't help anybody. So just think about your individual situations, what help you may need, and what others can do to help you get through this, because this is a super happy time for you, and it shouldn't be stressful, so don't let some of these little tweaks and changes stress you out because in the long run you're marrying the love of your life and we are going to get you through that and you're going to live happy ever after. So that I hope this video has been very helpful and I hope it has given you some information and you know if some things drastically change I'll be happy to do another one if that's what y'all would like um, but I just wanted to kind of rein all the information in and of what I'm seeing and what the vendors in the triad are seeing and just kind of just let everybody know in a non-panicked and non-crazy way because we're getting all sides just inundated with information that the wedding industry is is continuing we are all here for our events there may be some small changes you know you may need to do a few little extra things but other than that right now this is where we're at so Happy planning.